Okay, welcome to CS4510. I believe this is 10-1, and today's topic is on what's called Rice's Theorem. This is named after a guy named Henry Gordon Rice. Uh, it's a very powerful theorem. It's incredibly useful. Once you see the proof, it can make proving undecidable languages very easy. The theorem states that most uh, properties... of Turing machines and and I'll put a little asterisk by this because it's I have to expand on that are undecidable so first off what is a property a property is something that you have a natural understanding of as a property of something it's like like a, in a game, a sword can have a certain like poison damage or something, right? That's like a property of the sword. A property is a partition of the recognizable languages. So, such that the recognizable languages, this is equal to sub p union, like p complement. A language that would have a certain property would be something like uh, M is a Turing machine, an encoding of a Turing machi machine, such that the language of M is in this property. Here's what I, why I gave the asterisk about Turing machines. This is a statement about the language. This is not a statement about the machine itself. Sure, the, because the language is recognizable, there exists a Turing machine for it, but this has nothing to do with the machine, even though the language is of the machines, the encodings of the machines. Properties could be things like M is regular, or things like uh, M is finite, Or things like uh, M halts on all inputs. Or these kinds of things, right? What they can't be is things like uh, M has 17 states. That is a property of the Turing machine. That is not a property of the language recognized by the Turing machine. So the fact that the Turing machine itself has 17 states, you can actually, that's also, by the way, it's a decidable language. You take the encoding, you just count the states. There's 17 of them. Good for you. It, so this is what I would call this like a syntactic property. This is a property of the statement of the Turing machine. This is not a property of the language uh, de recognized by the Turing machine. So that's what we mean explicitly by property. Second, by most, I kind of really meant non-trivial. So uh, property P is non-trivial if both P and P complement are not empty. Another way to say this is uh, there exists there exists M1 such that the language of M1 is in P and there exists M0 such that the language of M0 is not in P. So they're both, excuse me, not, uh, yeah, not in P or in uh, P complement. So the both sets are not empty. You can think of, again, I wrote it like this, so you can think of, like, these are all the recognizable languages, and then, then P is a partition of it. So this is P, and this is P complement. So it's saying that it's not overwhelmingly dominating it, right? Rice's theorem states that non-trivial properties of Turing machines are undecidable, essentially. So let's go ahead and just uh, give the proof, and then I'll give some applications of the proof. And what we're going to do is, you should sort of instinctively by now be begging to reduce to ATM. 
So basically what we're going to do is create a Turing machine whose language is in P if and only if M accepts W and whose language is not in P if and only if M does not accept, could loop or reject on W. But essentially we're deciding ATM. Okay, let me first list out some assumptions. Uh, assume to the contrary the set uh, L of M. M is a Turing machine and L of M has the property is decidable. We were trying to prove this set is undecidable. And uh, P is a non-trivial property. And P is non-trivial. So there exists M1 such that the language of M1 is in P. There's something in it. We're just going to call it M1. There's at least one Turing machine here. Uh, assume that there exists a Turing machine. We'll call it M empty set to decide uh, the empty set and that the language decidable with this empty set has the pro does not have the property. This seems like a, you know we're losing generality here, but actually by the assumption that p is decidable, we could replace the proof with uh, p complement. We would have to get a different m one. But th this is possible. The decidable languages are closed under complement. So if, a, if a, a language is decidable, then so is its complement. So we can do this here. This is fine. Now I'm going to define a certain fancy Turing machine. Uh, define, we'll call it M prime. And it's going to take on input X. It's going to be hard coded. from some M, some W, and M1. First step is we're going to run M on W. If M on W accepts, then we're going to just sort of, uh, if M on W accepts, we're going to simulate M1 on X. So we're going to say run m1 on x if m1 on x so this is their turing machine with the property don't forget accepts we accept now if m on w did not accept else so this branch would be It either rejects or it loops. We reject. So this is the construction of M prime. Now, why do we care about M prime? Well, let's go deeper into the thing. If, if uh, M accepts W, then the language of M prime is just going to, we're going to enter this loop here, so we're doing this step. If M on W accepts, then we're simulating M1 on X, and we're just returning if that accepts, right? So the language of M prime is just reduced to this language of M1. And that implies that the language of M prime is going to be, because it's equal to M1, and M1 by assumption is in P, M prime is in P else so that means m1 accepts or, or rejects excuse me m1 rejects or loops the language of m prime is going to go to this block we're going to just reject all strings so the language here is going to be equal to the language of the turing machine which accepts nothing which is just the empty set right so that implies then that the language of m prime 
it's going to not be in P because we assumed, without loss of generality, that uh, the empty set was not in P. Therefore, this machine gives us a relation between the decidability of the property P and a decider for ATM. It relies on some things. It relies on that the fact that uh, the property is uh, non-trivial. But now we can just straight up build our decider. It says follows. Uh, this is a decider for ATM. So on input uh, M and W, we're going to build, build M prime. And recall, this is going to be hard coded from M, W, M prime. Uh, so now if M prime is in P, so P was decidable, then we knew that uh, we're back to here. We took this accepting branch, so we must so we know that M on W accepts. Else, so this is saying that you know M prime is not in P. We reject. So this is a decider. First of all, we're assuming to the contrary that P is decidable. So this can run. Uh, both of these can run and halt correctly. Building M runs in finite time. So this whole thing runs in finite time. So this is clearly a decider for ATM, which we know to be undecidable. Therefore, uh, by reduction, P is undecidable. That's contradicting our assumption. But this is for any non-trivial property P. Okay, that's it. That's the proof of uh, Isis theorem. It's a very beautiful theorem. Okay, let's do a couple examples. They're actually very easy. Consider the set of Turing machine encodings such that the machine is regular. Oops, not the machine. The language of the machine uh, is regular. Well, first off, we prove this is undecidable through a very complicated reduction. But I can apply it immediately via Rice's theorem. So first, we've got to do two things. The property P is if it is regular, right? I could have defined uh, R to be a class of regular languages, and I said if L of M is an R, and then the property then is R. But the, uh, let's do it this way. Okay, so we have to do two things first. One, is P about the language... and not the machine. Yes. Two, is P non-trivial? Well, let uh, uh, M1 in P be such that the language of M1 is sigma star. Okay, just the Turing machine accepts all input. It takes one transition that exists and let the Turing machine M2 um, in P B. Oh, excuse me, not in P. Uh, B, 0 to the N, oh, 1 to the N, where N is greater than equal to 0. Right? This is non-regular, and I think some time ago I gave you a Turing machine to decide this language. It just goes back and forth. So clearly there's an element, at least one element in P, and there's one element in P complement. Therefore, the 
P is non-trivial. Then, here's the great part. By Rice's theorem, we'll call this L. L is undecidable. That's it. That's all you got to do. It's like, you know, it's such a powerful tool. You just, you just start taking, it's like a big hammer. You can just start hitting languages with it and then bam, undecidable, bam, undecidable. You don't have to do any work. I don't have to do any work for this problem. Can you imagine how complicated the reduction is? Given that it's a powerful tool, it's also a very dangerous tool. It's very common on exams and homeworks and things to think I'm taking the easy way out. I'm going to prove this problem uh, is undecidable by Rice's theorem. And then the students will apply it incorrectly. They'll like mess up somehow the structure and they won't use the tool in the right way. And then when they were supposed to give a reduction, instead of they tried to do it by Rice's theorem, there you can't give any points. So it's like no points. So it's powerful, but uh, be warned. dangerous you could apply this to as another practice problem we could apply this to uh, consider L is encodings of machines such that the language of M is finite first off is this about the language not the machine check it is about the language it's not about the machine is it non-trivial well I don't even want to write it out. It's almost too simple. Well, there exists a machine which ex which is finite, right? Let uh, L of uh, M empty set is fine. The zero is the s is a finite number. <laughs> zero is a number. It's finite. So L of M is equal to the empty set, which is which has size zero. So it's finite. So there exists a finite a machine of finite language, finite length. There also exists undecidable language. Consider M sigma star which is equal to sigma star. It's cool that these are both regular, too, uh, for this thing. Then, by Rice's theorem, by Rice's theorem, this is undecidable. Okay, I'll give you one more language, and this might be the only time something in this course could be applicable. Consider the set of Turing machines uh, such that the language of the Turing machine is itself, is its own encoding. So what does this mean? The Turing machine prints its encoding on the tape and halts. It knows its own description, and then it says goodbye. This is essentially a virus, okay? Virus makes copies of itself on somewhere in the system and then deploys it. This is essentially the language of all viruses. This is what a virus does, okay? It cop makes copies of its own program and memory. So first off, does there exist a Turing machine So it does there exist a Turing machine to print its own encoding? Uh, yes, there does. And I'll have to build up some more to prove that to you, but perhaps you can just believe me that there does exist this. You because you can imagine a computer program that can do this, right? Second, does there exist a Turing machine which doesn't do this? Yes. So by Rice's theorem, it's undecidable. This is part of what makes antivirus so difficult. It's as the, it's the same reason your IDE can't actually tell you if you're in an infinite loop or not. These things, you know, you can't know things about them. There's Rice's theorem at the high level. All non-trivial properties of Turing machines are undecidable. There's no point even trying to work on it. It's quite beautiful.